Okay, so I'm going to go through a, uh, a couple of of the events here uh, that are on your final um, question uh, 11 of your final parts A and B uh, are kind of these uh, first two things. The first one, we'll just jump right into it, um, is the Rock of Beheston, right? So this one's kind of interesting. Let me show you, give you a, a kind of a a broad picture here of what this looks like. So this is the mountain that the rock is carved into. And this is in uh, modern day Iran, right? So this is over in the Middle East there. And um, from from this shot, you can't you can't really tell much about it. Um, uh, you know, it's a lot of water damage over the years and stuff. But this area here, clearly you can see where it's carved out. Um, and then if you get a little closer, this is a close-up shot of it. And let me give you one other so you can kind of see here how it's carved in uh, to the side there. When you get up closer, it becomes a lot more apparent. And it's it's fairly large um, in carving there. And so for many years, people would just uh, walk past this area, travelers, through this valley. It was a fairly well-known and well-traveled valley there. And as they walked past, they could look up and they could see the carvings and that kind of stuff. But as you can see, it's it's fairly high up there, um, and a lot of loose gravel and sand, uh, kind of precarious here. So it's kind of a difficult area um, to get to. It appears a lot of this is probably loose sand from when they did the work, um, and it kind of loosened it up, and then over the years, just erosion and all this stuff. So it's it, it appears to be kind of difficult to kind of get up there. Uh, and so for years, people would just walk past it, and they they saw the uh, the images, and and you could you can kind of make them out from the ground. It's hard to see them in that picture, but when you're actually standing there at the base, you can look up and see it pretty clearly. And so people would walk past, and you know, and they didn't particularly know what it was because it was it was ancient, right? And so you know, uh, for hundreds of years, you know, after the after the nation that carved it had disappeared, then people that came through, I mean, they saw it, but they didn't really know what it was. Um, and so just for years, it was just, you know, the carving there on the on the mountain. And then uh, a group of explorers wanted to check this thing out right? and, so, and see if they could discover anything about it. And so they climbed up there and... Um, and I don't know if you can make it out here in this picture, but you see these faint lines going all the way across? Um, you can see them in several places here. Well, actually what that is, is it's text. And so not only were was the image here of this king, right, and all of his servants and things, and his kind of royal symbol there, but then there was all kinds of text. Um, but it's kind of a cuneiform text where it's like... Uh, I don't know if you remember anything about cuneiform, but it was wedges, you know, wedges, triangles, you know, that kind of stuff, and a series of wedges. Uh, and so they eventually had it translated, and they were able to discover who it is, right? And so um, this is actually someone, a king from one of the biblical stories, and his name is King Darius, right? King Darius. And so if you remember um, King Darius... Uh, was one of uh, the kings that uh, that took over. Uh, he was uh, one of the kings of the Persians, right? That took over after the Assyrians. Um, so it kind of went the Assyrian nation uh, took over. You know, they were leading things for a while, and then the Persians uh, kind of took over. Uh, if you remember uh, Xerxes. Uh, from the story of Esther and some of these, and then Darius then kind of followed up after them. And so, but Darius the Mede is mentioned in the biblical text. And so a lot of times there was a lot of controversy for a while about whether uh, the Persian kingdom ever had this Mede, because uh, the Medes and Persians were slightly different, but they were kind of connected. And so we have the record in the Bible of the Persian kings, and then we have all of a sudden Darius the Mede, is king. And so there was a lot of uh, people for a while that questioned whether the Bible could even be true about that because they, they didn't have any other records about that. And so Darius 
the Mede was uh, was uh, uh, almost a questioned figure of history, so to speak, right? Like that, you know, is you know, is the Bible even true about this? You know, because they're always looking for something to disprove in the Bible, and so here they come to this. Oh well, the Bible says this guy was king during that time, and there's not even any record of him as being king. Um, and the Persians and the Medes, they never, you know, they weren't that close, you know, and all those kinds of things. Um, and so the significance of this finding is it clearly shows then that Darius the Mede, who, which is this, this person here, um, clearly was a king and fairly substantial king to have been able to carve out this giant, uh, you know, memoir to himself there. Um, but so anyways, that's kind of interesting that um, that through the book of uh, Daniel and, and kind of these other Esther and uh, that time period uh, of captivity uh, that the Israelites kind of went through, uh, Darius the Mede was kind of a prominent figure through part of it, right? And so uh, to find something that was done by him and that's so large and clearly was done by him and for him, so to speak, um, really just further evidence, like so many of the things in this class, that the biblical story is true, right? So anyway, so this rock of Beheston um, is a carving of Darius the Mede, um, so that's kind of interesting. And then uh, the other one I want to talk about is this uh, Atarsic epic. Um, this was... Uh, Obviously, you can see a picture of it here. It's a tablet that was found. Now, this is not what we would consider uh, absolute true history here, right? This is um, kind of uh, embellished quite a bit, you know, a lot of fantastic elements to it and things. Um, but the interesting thing about this is that it was a, uh, a, a story about the flood, right, from a non biblical perspective right so it's not it's not biblical text it's not written by a biblical author it's just written by a secular nation and it's but we you know because we've known that the secular nations have had um, their own uh, accounts of the flood a lot of times passed down kind of oral tradition things of that nature but this is actually an ancient record of a nation's flood uh, history, although it's it's got some embellishments and and it talks about the reason why the gods destroyed uh, the earth with the great flood was because men were too loud and they talked too much and they were getting on the gods' nerves, so they wiped out the whole earth with the flood. Um, and you know, and so it's just kind of interesting, though that um, that even though their their rendition of why the Lord destroyed the earth is is not accurate, right? Um, but just the fact that they have the recorded story of it uh, from way back then um, is kind of an interesting thing to find here, right? So it doesn't necessarily give us any historical details about the flood, um, but it does go to show you that from very ancient and early history, uh, they remembered the fact that the whole earth had been destroyed by a flood, right? And so we, we've always known that most cultures have a flood story, but to find one in ancient history is pretty neat, and it's it's in fairly decent condition, you know, uh, as to where they're able to read the majority of what uh, the story entailed. And so it's kind of neat uh, finding there, okay? So hopefully that will uh, help you with a few of uh, the things on your final there, and... Uh, and uh, some of the other stuff uh, with the flood story, there's a few other ones. Enuma Elish is kind of a Mesopotamian creation story. Um, and then, you know, there's a few others. So this is not the only one that's found, but this is kind of an interesting one. The Gilgamesh epic is another one. Um, so there's a few of these things out there, but this one's interesting because it's very ancient and it's uh, in tablet form and it's been preserved. Um, in a, in a in a good condition